everybody and welcome back to all knots welcome to another day here in the yarn dungeon where i'm all about showing the world that crochet is killer today we are going to make some mittens on the addy machine they're going to end up looking something a little bit like this i had to do the red and black obviously they're my favorite colors but don't worry i did not use this yarn for the tutorial because it's a little bit hard to pick it up see what i'm doing so i randomly chose these two colors here which i am not really mad about in any way shape or form the design does wrap all the way around here because this body part we're going to be making on the Addy King and then folding it up on itself, essentially making a super thick, warm and chunky mitten here. Excellent for super cold days. The yarn that I decided to use is the Big Twist yarn, which is 100% acrylic and the Addy Machine loves it. Like honestly, you're not gonna have to worry about fighting with this on your machine, fighting with the yarn, just focus on the pattern. If you do plan on using these quite a bit though, I would suggest getting the anti-pilling version. I just had a ton of this laying around, so I figured why not, I'll just go ahead and use it. So I won't be throwing these in the dryer or anything, but if you don't wanna worry about that, they do actually have an anti-pilling version version. Like I said, I just didn't have any of that laying around. There is a written version of this pattern that is linked down below that has pictures, the entire pattern laid out with the materials and everything. So if you preferred the written version, that can be found down below. So if you're excited to make this mitten pattern, first off, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Then go ahead and grab all your materials as well as some caffeine and let's make some mittens. So here's our Addy machine. Go ahead and grab the clamps and attach this onto each leg and then onto a table or some sort of hard surface. Next, we're gonna need our waist yarn. Make sure it's a totally different color than either of the two colors that you're using for this mitten. So crank this over, find the three black teeth here. We're gonna start with this very first one, two to three inches there, and we're gonna start alternating. So we're gonna cast on in the front, then behind this next one, in front, behind, in front, behind. We're gonna keep doing that all the way around, alternating in front of the tooth, behind of the tooth, all the way around for this very first row to cast on this waist yarn. We made it all the way around now. We're back to the very first black tooth that we use. Make sure that this yarn goes underneath this little red lip here. So it goes underneath, then open up this yarn guide, lay the yarn right in there, close it up. Then we're gonna switch this over to zero and we're gonna cast on five rows. So crank, start slowly. And after you have the first row done, you can go a little bit faster, but just go slow right off the bat just to make sure that everything catches nicely and nothing drops or anything or it gets holed up. And there we go. Okay, so go ahead and do four more rows for this waist yarn. Go ahead and grab your main color. Then you're gonna wanna pull out quite a bit of yarn here to lay in the middle because we're actually gonna be using this to close up the bottom portion. So as big as this, I don't know, just honestly more than you think you're gonna need, a handful pretty much. Lay that right in front of this first black tooth, feed it through the yarn guide, close that up, make sure that this is back to zero. Then we're gonna crank 15 and right here really pay attention you want to make sure that that is underneath that red lip once again and that both the waist yarn and the main color yarn is underneath this very first tooth. As long as everything looks fine after this first one that one didn't that one kind of popped up a little bit so that's why we go slow for the first round. All right, made it around for the first time, so I'm gonna do 14 more rows of this.
For row number 16, we're gonna start to work on the design. So go ahead and open up this yarn guide again. We're not taking this out. This is technically still gonna be an active yarn piece here, but we're taking it out and go ahead and grab your secondary color. Take about two to three inches there, put that in the middle, and then place that underneath this very first tooth. For the design, we're gonna be alternating between the colors every other tooth, and that's how the pattern is gonna pick up. So for the very first one, this green is gonna be picked up. Then we're gonna switch this, move this over a little bit. The second tooth gets the purple, and now we're gonna spin it. So the green will go behind, then it'll go in front of this third one. Now we're gonna spin it again and go to the purple then green, then purple. So we're gonna be alternating like this. For this process, it's important for you to figure out how to hold it. I like to hold it right in between my middle finger here and then one as my active working yarn that I can maneuver. That's just what, what works easiest for me. Honestly, you're just gonna have to play around and see which is the easiest, but we're just alternating between two active strands of yarn. And it's really important that you pull this tension rather tight because otherwise, like you're doing all of the tension right here. And if you do it too loose, you're gonna end up with spaces in between each one of your stitches and that's not something that you want. Now we've made it all the way around. We're back to our very first tooth here. And so you can tell we did it right because we started with the green on this first black tooth and now on this last white tooth, we have the purple that's going in front of it. So we alternated all the way around. Perfect, that's exactly what we want. For row number 17, we're not gonna use this accent color anymore. So just go ahead and pop that right in the middle. Don't cut it though, because we're still gonna use it. Move that over a little bit place this main color right back into the yarn guide, close that up, and we're gonna do one full crank around one row of the main color here. For row 18, we're gonna go ahead and do that pattern again, but we're gonna switch up the way that we started the colors. This way, the hearts are like stacked opposite of each other and they're not like right on top of each other. They're gonna make that really cool pattern where they're a little bit like side by side. So once again, open up this yarn guide, pull that one out, set the accent color on the side here. All right, so now we're gonna be starting for row 18, we're gonna be starting with purple. So purple goes in this front of the very first one here. Then we're gonna start to alternate again. And once again, if you have to go slow, that's perfect. Honestly, it just takes a little bit of time, a little bit getting used to it. But once you get into it and you find how to hold the yarn, that's like half of the battle right there. Here we are at the very final tooth for row 18. And you know, we did it right because we started with purple and we ended up with green. Row 19, throw that accent color in there once again. Frank that white one over top. Make sure this purple is underneath this ledge again. Open up that yarn guide, place that in there. Pull that down. And we're gonna crank one row of the solid purple. 
And that's the pattern that we're gonna follow for rows 20 through 35. We're gonna follow up that whole pattern. So rows 16 through 19, that's the whole pattern that we created, which is basically just alternating between the two colors with a solid row of the main color in between it. If you don't remember, definitely go ahead and go back and just follow through rows 16 through 19. It's timestamped down below, so you can go ahead and follow along through there. But I'm just gonna continue on here for rows 20 through 35, working up that pattern here, and I will see you at row 36. Rows 36 through 48, we're gonna be only working with this main color once again, totally done with this secondary color for this mitten anyway, so we can go ahead and cut that one. You wanna cut about like two to three inches there because we are gonna like knot this up, so you wanna have enough that you can work with. Let's go ahead and go over a couple of stitches there. And then keep on working until you get to row 48. Again, we're gonna use this in order to close up this end of the mitten. So make sure that it catches over this very first black tooth. We're gonna do a long tail once again, then cut it. Grab some more waste yarn and then we're gonna feed this in to work five more rows. Then open up this yarn guide, take the yarn and place it in the middle there, and simply crank this off of the machine. Now that we have this one done, we're gonna go ahead and do that whole process one more time to make the other mitten. For the thumb portion, we're gonna go ahead and use the Addy Express. And once again, go ahead and grab some waist yarn and cast on five rows of waist yarn. Next, grab your main color once again, and we're gonna open up this yarn guide place that waist yarn right in the middle there, just like maybe 12 inches there. And we're gonna wrap it right around the first black hook, place it into the guide there, close it over. Make sure it catches all of them. Doesn't get snagged, perfect.
Then continue to work out 13 rows for the main color of the thumb. Grab your scissors and we're gonna cut, make sure it goes over that very last, or the very first black tooth there. We're gonna cut another like 12 inches or so, place that in the middle. And we're gonna grab our waste yarn once again to cast on five more rows. Once you have all five rows, go ahead and crank this off of the adding machine. Then repeat that whole process one more time for the other thumb portion. For the assembly of the mitten here, we're gonna need a five millimeter crochet hook and also a yarn needle. So first we're gonna start by closing up these ends because this whole thing is gonna be doubled up, which is why this is such a soft and squishy mitten here. So working in this stitch right here, then this active one, gonna yarn over and close that up. Then we're gonna just go ahead and line all of these up. So you can see that all of these have a partner stitch. We're just gonna move all the way down the line here. Now we can go ahead and remove this waist yarn here. And one side is always more difficult than the other. This one happened to be nice and easy. And that's what it should look like here. So I'm gonna do that whole process on this other side once again. Here's what it looks like all done. Make sure once again that you don't throw this waist yarn out though, especially since now this is cut out specifically for the thumb of a mitten. You can go ahead and like label this in somewhere. That way you know and you can reuse this as many times as you need. For the main part of your mitten, this is what it's gonna look like when it's fresh off of the adding machine and the pattern doesn't look quite set up right there, but all you need to do is go ahead and stretch it out a little bit. Apart from the fact that that is super satisfying, now you can actually see the right pattern that it went ahead and created. Before you finish up closing your sides, make sure that both of these parts in here are knotted because you don't want this to actually come undone before you end up using it. But you also don't have to worry about weaving it in because it's gonna be on the inside of the mitten and it's gonna be trapped in between these two pieces of fabric, so you don't even need to do that. If you feel like this is gonna bother you, you can weave it in and you can also cut it a lot shorter so you have some options there. Also, don't pull too tightly on there, otherwise it's gonna distort your pattern a little bit. Once you have those all locked in place, go ahead and close up both of these sides. To close up the mitten, we're gonna go ahead and fold this over in half 
And this is gonna be the top portion that we're gonna to cinch together here. And this is the bottom where your actual hand is gonna go into. And you can tell because that's how the pattern is going. Obviously these two points are pointing upward towards the tip of the mitten. You're gonna need a yarn needle and a little bit more of this main color here. Go ahead and cut about double the length of the mitten with a little bit extra to spare. Attach the yarn onto the yarn needle. Then we're gonna start from the bottom and work our way up. We're gonna use the mattress stitch to close this up. So we need to attach this yarn onto one of the sides here. Just go ahead and pull that yarn through and close this up here. Now, when you're doing the mattress stitch on this, make sure that you pick one row to go into. So if you're gonna go ahead and go right here, make sure that you follow that all the way down. If you end up like jumping to like this one accidentally or this one down below, it's gonna make the mitten a little bit crooked. So make sure the row that you go into is consistent all the way through. And this one ends up being really nice because obviously you can see this very clearly. This is the row that we're gonna be working in. And then this top row right here. So working across with the mattress stitch, we're just gonna start right on the bottom. And I do have a video up in the corner here of a close-up and a little slow-mo of how to do the mattress stitch if you need a little refresher. Once you get all the way to the beginning of the design, we're gonna skip five stitches in order to create a space for the thumb. So all we're gonna do is work underneath this and carry this yarn along. So count over one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna pull that along all the way up to there. Pull that through. And since we're done with this part here, go ahead and pull this nice and tight and that's gonna close it all up. Then continue to work the mattress stitch all the way down for the top part of the mitten. To close the top here, we're gonna use our yarn needle. And if you have enough yarn left, go ahead and just keep on using that. Otherwise, attach another piece of yarn onto the top here. And we're just gonna weave this in and out of every other stitch. Then go ahead and pull that closed. That is the top of the mitten there. You're gonna to wanna to run your needle through a couple of times and place one knot in there. So pull it through like this. Find another spot to run it through at least one more time. And then move it onto the inside, then place the knot so the knot's on the inside of the mitten here.
for the thumb piece, once again, we're gonna go ahead and fold it over. And if you have a long enough piece of yarn here, we're gonna attach this onto our yarn needle. Otherwise, go ahead and grab a little bit of your main color. Fold it in half and match your stitch all the way up. To close the top, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna alternate weaving in and out of each stitch here. To attach this onto the mitten, we're gonna need a little bit more yarn. Attach it onto your yarn needle, and I like to double knot this one just to make sure it's nice and secure and it's not gonna go anywhere. Go ahead and actually try this on so you can position this where you would like it. There is a seam that's gonna be happening right here, so I like to have that on the inside. So that's about normally exactly how I like everything to line up. And on here, I'm gonna attach this yarn. Attach this and leave a long enough tail so you can go ahead and weave this in at the end. Then just go ahead and mattress stitch all the way around to attach this onto the mitten. It can be a little bit cumbersome to start here, but just make sure that you're going in the same line all the way around once again so it's not crooked. Once it's attached, go ahead and tie this off, weave your ends in, and cut off any excess that you have. All right, so I hope that you absolutely enjoyed making this pattern. If you did, don't forget to shout it out down below. What is your color combo that you're gonna be using for your mittens here? I would love to know. Shout it in the comments. Thank you so much once again for hanging out with me here in the Yarn Dungeon, making these fantastically spooky mittens. Have a fantastically spooky day, and I will see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.